Have you ever listened to music and felt your stress suddenly disappear? Or have you ever cringed at a five-year-old playing violin? Why does music elicit such intense responses in humans? What even is music? Music is a collection of sound waves that form a pattern. Western music contains 12 different notes, each a semitone away from each other. Every note produces a unique sound wave. Sound waves are longitudinal waves, so they actually look like a slinky. The change in pressure around air particles causes them to vibrate in the same direction as the sound wave is traveling. As you go higher on the scale, the amount of time it takes for one particle to go back and forth decreases, and so the frequency increases. But why does this sound good? But this sounds bad. Let's see what happens to the final wave and the ratio of frequencies when we combine, or superimpose, the individual waves that each note produces. Voila! The waves produce a pattern and the frequency ratio is small. This is known as consonance. But what about the ugly chord? Yikes! The wave doesn't form a pattern at all and the frequency ratio is huge. This is known as dissonance. But why does our brain like consonants more than dissonance? Let us consider a simple model of the way sound travels from the ear to the brain. Two sensory neurons react to different waves. Each sends an electrical signal, known as an action potential, to the interneuron, which sends the final signal to the brain. The interneuron fires when it receives the signal from either or both sensory neurons. With a consonant sound, the signals from the sensory neurons arrive at the same time, so the interneuron still fires just once, then recharges before it fires again. The result is a regular string of pulses. The signals from distant waves arrive at different times, and so the inter interneuron generates a random string of pulses. The less random a signal is, the more information or regularity it contains. Therefore, consonant notes produce higher regularity with more information than dissonant notes. But what does any of this have to do with those goosebumps I get listening to Beethoven? Well, you can thank the neurotransmitter dopamine for that. The action potentials that the interneuron sends goes to many parts of the brain. The ones responsible for the chills are the caudate and the nucleus accumbens, which release a ton of dopamine. As the song is developing, the Kari is filling with dopamine and is bribing you with the expectation for a reward at the climax. Finally, when the high note is hit, the nucleus accumbens is flooded with dopamine and you get goosebumps and chills. Funny thing is, composers know that you're waiting for that climax, so they delay it as much as possible. The longer you wait for it, the greater your desire, and thus the greater the pleasure at the climax. Understanding the connection between music and neuroscience has led doctors to develop and use music therapy to treat depression, relieve stress, help patients recover from strokes and heart attacks, and even treat Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. So the next time you get chills listening to your favorite song, make sure you thank sound waves and dopamine for that.